Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Brandon. I am a freelance photographer based out of New York. And today I'm bringing you another editing tutorial. What I really love about editing is that all of these different kinds of effects and techniques that we use are pretty much endless, especially with the programs we have now. So whenever I'm feeling inspired, I love to kind of step out of my everyday kind of like editing habits and try out something new. And recently I've shared these few images across my Instagram and I got a lot of questions from you guys about how to create this sort of effect. And it's actually really easy. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys today. This video is also in partnership with Photoshop on the iPad, which is crazy because if you guys have seen any of my editing videos, you know that I'm a diehard Photoshop user. So, I mean, they're all I use to edit now. I know I'm not on the iPad right now. We're gonna get into it. We're actually gonna be starting the edit on my laptop here and then transferring it over to the iPad. And this sort of process is actually pretty realistic for me because I'm never sure if I have to kind of get out the door or I'm gonna be traveling. So having my iPad on hand to transfer over files to edit on the go has been super, super helpful. We're gonna be opening up the raw photo here. So here's the image we'll be working with today. This is a photo of my friend Kaylee. It was shot on my Nikon Z7 with my 35 millimeter F 1.4 lens. And I'm super into this photo. I really like how the sunset looks and I think that we could do a lot within camera raw right now to kind of emphasize that. And sunset photos like this are a really great option to use for the effect that we're going for because there's a lot of negative space, there's a lot of color to work with. So I'm just going into the basics panel here to bring down the highlights and the whites, fixing up the temperature, moving over to calibration. I'm just playing with a lot of the primary colors and the hues. Again, I just really wanna emphasize these existing colors because especially with sunsets, I think they always look so great in person and it's really hard to capture them through your camera with all of the colors that are available. The color grading panel is also one of my favorites to use for bringing out a lot of color in the highlights, shadows, and mintones. I'm not making too many changes. Again, I just want to kind of bring down those highlights and be sure that we're capturing that sunset. Just checking in on that before and after to make sure that we're all good to go. All right, now that we opened up our file within actual Adobe Photoshop, we're just gonna duplicate our layer and start with some skin retouching. For the most part, she's gonna be fairly silhouetted, but there will be parts of her skin and face and hair that you will be able to make out. So just going in with the patch tool and just refining some of that skin here. Now we're heading over to the dodge tool. I wanna to bring out some of those already existing highlights within her face. I think they look really cool and I wanna emphasize that as much as we can with it still looking pretty natural. And then moving over to like her shirt and her hair and her bag and just making sure we're bringing out some highlights there as well. And when I'm editing, I'm always thinking about how things would play out in real life. So clearly she's facing towards some sort of light source, whether it's like the glow of a building or that's where the sun was. And now we're creating a selective color adjustment layer to play more with the colors of the sunset. We did make adjustments, you know, within Camera Raw, but making even more here will just have that sunset look really striking. So now I'm pretty confident with this kind of layer that we've created um, and I'm gonna duplicate that to apply a preset. And so we're just gonna head on over to Camera Raw and play with some of those already existing presets there. And then just making some further adjustments. Recently, I've been loving editing images a little bit moodier and darker. Um, so that's what I'm doing right here. All right, so those are all the adjustments I'm gonna make on my laptop. We're gonna now move over to my iPad. So we're just gonna head on over to File, Save As, and label our PSD file. 
And there are a few different methods you could use for transferring over. Creative Cloud is a great option. And if you're working between Mac devices like I am right now, you can also just airdrop the file. And it's really easy to open back up into the iPad. All right, so now we have moved over to the iPad. Um, this is just the iPad Pro, and then I have the Apple Pencil right here. And while we wait for this to transfer over, I just wanted to talk about my favorite updates that just came to Photoshop on the iPad. One of which is Camera Raw, which we were just using on my laptop. So now you have the ability to edit raw files on the iPad. To do this, you're just gonna tap import and open from the home screen in Photoshop on the iPad. Select your raw photo. In the camera raw mode that opens, you can choose to edit the image data manually or apply auto adjustments. And from here, you can edit the raw image data from different panels that you can expand or collapse. There's things like light, color, effects, detail, and optics, all similar to what we were just doing again on my laptop. And then just tap done once you've finished applying your edits and import as a smart object or just a general layer. They've also updated their masking tool and selection tool. They've also made some updates to their healing brush, their masking tools, their custom brushes, and selection tool, which we're gonna be using today because that includes um, the updated version of the select subject tool, which is gonna be super essential for carving out a layer of our subject here, which is Kaylee. So let's just get into it. As it opens right here, you can see all of the layers that we were just working on. So everything has imported really seamlessly. And as you can see, the interfaces are pretty similar, so it's not too much of a learning curve. So just making sure we're on the layer we want to select our subject on, we're going to head on over to the lasso tool and hold that down. And at the bottom, you'll see select subject. So we're going to tap that. It'll select Kaylee right here. But now that we have our subject selected, we're going to head on over to refine edge. Because every time you're using the selection tool, whether it just be the magic wand or the lasso or in this case the select subject tool it will be a pretty hard edge and we want it to kind of look a little bit more natural um, so to check this out we're gonna head on over to the view mode right now it's in the marching ants and we're gonna head on over to overlay you can see exactly what it's selecting now a little bit better if you want to change this up you could also go to on black on white or even just black and white um, so just playing around with things like feathering can help just bring a little bit more smoothness to the overall selection. So now what we're going to do is just head on over here to copy selection and then paste. And what that will do is put Kaylee on a whole nother layer. Um, and now we're ready to kind of create our effect. So we're heading on over to the layer that includes our sunset, but this time we're going to select the marquee rectangle and kind of just like freehand. Well, not necessarily freehand because they're giving us a rectangle, but like, you know what I mean? All right. So now we're just going to go on over to copy selection once again and paste that. And now if we get rid of all these layers, you can see we just have this sky, which we could play around with. We head on over to the transform tool. We can like move it around. Putting it upside down could be cool. I don't know. We could do a lot of different things, but for now, we're just going to make sure that it's behind our subject. And this is my favorite part to just play around with the placement. Just playing with if we want it like above her or below, we can even play with the skew and the shape. If we also zoom in, we can even play around a little bit more with our selection, like this little hair right here I kind of don't want. So we're just gonna simply create a mask. Hair can definitely get a little bit tricky when you're outlining a subject, so it's awesome to have the option to make it your own. And now from here, something we could do is kind of fade out the bottom of this selection, so creating another mask. I kind of like how it fades into parts of the original sky. And we can even emphasize that a little bit more. From here, we can play around with some adjustment layers. So if we want to head on over to add new adjustment layer, we can play with curves. And we'll bring that curve selection above all the others just to make sure that it's applying it to everything. Very subtle, but I'm liking it. We can create another adjustment layer. Maybe we'll head on over to color balance. 
And these are all just simple color corrections, but it's super cool that we could be able to do it on the go with the iPad. We can always pop back in and out between our different layers. All right, there you go. Well, I'm super happy with how this turned out. And finally, we're just gonna head on over here to export our file. Um, I'm gonna choose JPEG at the highest quality and export that. And that'll save right to my camera roll and we can post it. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial made possible by Photoshop on the iPad. Um, and be sure to download it. I'm gonna be leaving a link in the description below. And once you do, be sure to try it out and then come back to this video and let me know what your favorite update is. I feel like for me, it would be between Camera Raw or the updated Select Subject Tool. So I'm gonna go with both. But with all that, I'll see you guys soon.